my name is Doug, and um, this is obviously not a uh, video on the tool safety, but what it is, is a video of 50 years of woodworking and metal projects I've done. This project you see in this old 8mm film was a glass bottom boat that I created. I got the idea from Poplar Mechanics. They claimed it could be built for $35. It cost me $135. By the time I fiberglassed it, I put the rounded nose on the front end of it and basically customized it. This drum goes back to junior high school. I built this out of mahogany and pine wood. Vinter Cellar is a more recent project I did for a person that's opening up a restaurant up north. This is my smoker. This was a big project, 300 pounds of steel. I have four shelves in there that I can lay meats down on or copied it after a design of a Smith & Wesson 4-inch. However, this looks more like a 2-inch because I was concerned about the smoke traveling out the barrel successfully. The Smith & Wesson engraving is from a laser machine and that's a walnut wood. Here are two projects I got into when I decided I was going to do a western theme. Pepe the Mule. This uh, particular one stands about seven feet tall. I built it for some friends and they display it in their front yard. For an Elks outing, I built a bunch of centerpieces, cowboys sitting on a fence. This is a diamond dan, a card shark. That's a serving tray. It is a tile that I lasered and etched a uh, stain onto the tile itself. As I made more and more stuff out of metal, I began to want special tools. So I made a four by eight foot homemade CNC plasma cutter table. I made a powder coat oven, five foot by four foot by 20 inch capacity. And I made a 30 ton H press to bend uh, thicker metal up to quarter inch. I was asked to make a design for the Elks Lodge above the bar. The challenge was it was about an 18 inch by 12 or 14 feet. Acrylic plastics cut quite well on a laser machine. A local school requested a spinning wheel, something like Wheel of Fortune. So I built this five foot diameter spinning wheel. Acrylic also does well in reflecting light. This was an experiment of light shining through the bottom of acrylic. This is a 40 inch tall dollhouse I built for my daughter, hexagon shaped lighthouse. Today her daughters are playing with the same dollhouse. This was an interesting project. When I was in elementary school, I remembered a maze game that was very popular. I did some research and located one of the old maze games this is my version. This next group of photos and videos are a series of birdhouses that I made, uh, mostly for display, um, bright colors and what have you, although we've learned over the a period of time that some of these homes are actually popular with the birds. In the area that we live, we have a problem with soil draining properly. I made these wine barrels, this being the largest, to uh, plant lemon, lime, and orange trees. This windmill I created, it was a fun project. It decorates our entry to our home. Here's Stormwatch, the little guy I carved. 
I was asked to make this wedding cake stand for some very good friend's daughter's wedding. September 1936, Poplar Mechanics came out with an article on how to build midget trailers to be pulled behind the old pedal cars. The little trailers reminded me of the teardrop trailers of the 40s. I made a handful of these trailers, maybe six of them. I later learned that one of my little teardrop trailers made it to the Ford Museum in Michigan as an end cap display being pulled by a period pedal car during a trailer travel exhibition. Although these next group of photos involve a laser machine, I thought I'd go ahead and throw out some of the uh, plaques I've made recently. Chocolate Moose and his son, Chocolate Chip. The Horseshoe Pits is where friends come over. We enjoy a number of hours together throwing shoes. You can see the protective covers so if it rains it doesn't uh, muddy up the pits too deeply. Those are the bleachers I made for those who want to sit and watch us play. We have a couple cowboys who sit in the back and keep an eye on the pit. This is a little cribbage boat. This is a doll sled I made probably 15 years ago for one of my granddaughters. This is a giraffe that powder coated, one of the first larger projects I did with the powder coat oven. This is Poncho, our uh, roll around fireplace. In the back of Poncho is a little door where I have a brick shelf. We can make pizzas in the oven. Here's some wall art. Here's a poker table that I made. I made it round so that any number of people, whether you have four, five, six, or seven people playing, everybody can equally space out. I have a chip holder for each person that slides around the table so the whole table is adjustable for the number of people that play. The gun clearing tube is on a weapons target range. It's a safe way to unload your weapon. The tube is filled with sand. Well, this brings us to the last project that I've just completed. It's a display cabinet my wife asked me to make for her, but I'd like to present it by way of showing you my very first cabinet that I ever made in 1968. It was a stereo cabinet. The display cabinet that my wife wanted me to make, she asked me to match her Bernhardt formal dining room set, a dining table, and a cupboard cabinet, as pictured here. I made it with beveled glass and an LED light, low temperature lighting to show off a red glass. Oh hey, okay, you've seen 50, 60 different projects I've created over the years. Uh, if you'd like to see some more detailed information on those particular projects, you can visit my website www.doitcave.com. You might go to one of the other websites and check out a safety video before you start using tools.